You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. It's time for the Dragon Con Report, your go-to show for both newbies and seasoned pros gearing up for the annual downtown Atlanta convention. With interviews, expert advice, and all the latest updates straight from the dragon's mouth and fans themselves. Stay tuned, you might just uncover something unexpected. Howdy! And welcome to the post-con episode of the 2024 Dragon Con Report. Yes, Dragon Con 2024 is over. It's been over for, oh goodness, three weeks now? Has it been really that long? A couple over two weeks? I don't know. Uh, But don't worry, we're here to relive a lot of the fun moments that we had, as well as talk about some information for 2025. I'm your host, Mike Gordon, and I'm pleased to introduce you to the rest of our station crew, starting, of course, with Jen, who's here. Hello, everybody. I know, and uh, I, I understand uh, it took a little bit longer for you to recover, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but you did you did so much. I think we all were so busy. Yeah, uh, I well, and I didn't, I didn't even, one. I didn't even feel like I was that that busy this year. But but yeah, I was busy. <laughs> yeah, we all were so busy. One of the busiest cons that I can remember. Um, not that it's usually dull, but uh, man, it seemed like uh, we were all running around, including Channing as well. Hold on, I just hit the wrong button. There <laughs> we go. Uh, no word. I, thought I, got I thought you guys really did replace me with the monitors. So no hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> hey man, and. And to, uh, you can see Channing's image behind him if you're watching this on video. Yes, we actually all were at the same point. Like, our our schedules were so packed and so busy yes. that this was, like, taken, I think, in the brief two minutes that we yes. all were together. Yeah, yes. And, and, <laughs> For the and, whole weekend. And, and Channing and I actually got to share some drinks together on Thursday night of Congress. I am, at the, I am jealous at about party. that. For yes. sure. I am I am jealous about that. But I'm I'm so glad that we got to spend even that uh little bit of time together because it's yes, the first time yes, we've yes. actually all three been uh it's the first time I've actually met Channing in person. It's the yeah. first time I've met Channing. Yeah. And the funny part is I forgot I have the book and I was like, Oh, I'm gonna have Mike sign it. And then because I was rushing, like, oh crap. Um and <laughs> thanks to J- that that was my first tiki party, and yeah, it's probably gonna become a regular thing. Yeah um after that 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 oh. experience so well especially cool. now that i know the secret entrance oh boy oh yeah the, right. the, the patio entrance makes yes. such, such a difference yes. yeah well we will discuss all the good stuff that happened as well as uh maybe other stuff as well uh but uh let's get some business out of the way first and foremost dragon con report is an unofficial podcast of the con We are not and never have been officially connected with Dragon Con. And for all official news, we strongly recommend checking out the official website and all their social media outlets. Uh, We are a proud member of the ESO Network. On the ESO Network page, there's a direct link to our T Public store filled with all kinds of cool swag, including a very cool design for the Dragon Con Report podcast. I saw some T-shirts while I was at Dragon Con, and that's always awesome. So we appreciate you guys for that. We also have a Patreon page where supporters can access our, ex- well, we don't have an exclusive reading of the guest announcements this month. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know. We'll have to try to think of some other content that we can give to you, uh, you know, as we, as we sail off. Uh, so, uh, but thank you patrons for all your support. And it was so great meeting so many of you listeners and viewers uh, this year at Dragon Con. Um, in addition to the video stream on Facebook or YouTube that you're watching right now, an audio version of our show is still going to be available through all the usual places. You can always access our past episodes over the last, was it 13 years now? Yeah, we're on season 13. Wow. At DragonConReport.com. And however you access our show, please like, subscribe, share, hit those buttons and, and spread the word. We do appreciate you guys a lot. Uh, Leave us feedback or comment on the show. Please feel free to email us at feedback at dragonconreport.com. You can also reach out to us via Facebook, Instagram, uh, and there's some other, I think, uh, social medias that we are looking at as well. But those are the two main ones right now. So so before we get into uh, 2024 and reviewing everything that happened to us uh, as much as we can in the time allotted, 
uh, we do have some Dragon Con 2025 news. Uh, so, yes, everybody, Dragon Con 2025 is going to happen. <laughs> they, 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 they decided to do another one. <laughs> as good as 2024 was, they decided, you know what, let's, uh, let's, let's do this again. Yeah. So it is going to be August 28th through September 1st, 2025. It is again, Wait, once again, Labor should, Day weekend. I should I should adjust that year on the banner that's yes. on the screen right now. Let's fix that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. It is uh, 2025. So, uh, so Labor Day weekend once again. And of course, as we found out this year, the official date may be the 28th, but the 27th, 26th, 25th, maybe, you know, like, I don't even know. Maybe by August 20th. People yeah, pe- people were there on Monday and Tuesday, and Wednesday felt like a Friday. Yeah. Well, I, so at some points, it felt like a Saturday. So Wednesday, Wednesday was a vibe, man. Like, this was my first year being there on a Wednesday. And it was so funny. When I, I got there at 6 or 7 on Wednesday. I didn't think I was going to go out. Like, I'm tired from this flight. I went out. I tried to find Jen. Jen was like, I've gone to bed already. <laughs> yeah. I did. I did not. Yeah. I was hosting one of the parties to run the, to help run the countdown. And I left at 1030 and people were like, but the countdown, I was like, people can count without me there. <laughs> people know how to count. But to be fair, I only got two hours of sleep the night before we flew out and then we had to get up at four and be at the airport at five 30. And I hit the ground running once we got into town. So it, it's, I've, it's, I've learned a valuable lesson and that is to force myself to sleep. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that is a, that is a rule that we always dictate, you know, that the people adhere to is, is in, as well as hydrate and, and rest. No, uh, I mean, sleep before con. Sleep well, before I because, ever because a lot of times, <laughs> because a lot of times you're busy, so busy prepping for con and you're it's everything is like leading up to the last minute, last minute, last minute that, yes, it is not uncommon for me to only get a few hours sleep the the, 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 the time before con, like the day before yeah. con. Now, yeah, I, I should have taken my sleeping gummies, mm-hmm. you know, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get up in time, but uh yeah i just <laughs> as an insomniac yeah i should have taken my sleeping gummies so for folks thinking about going to 2025 we definitely encourage you to do so uh five day memberships right now are available and they are 115 dollars which plus, fee. plus, plus yes fees. plus the the service fees uh yeah. however they so they were 100 coming out of the con mm-hmm. uh they've gone up 15 dollars that is ridiculous in this day and age when you know people are saying that this is too much this is too much prices are going up prices are going up 115 dollars for a five-day pass at dragon con to me is one of the best deals you'll ever yes. see yeah uh, and i mean that's, I mean, I, that's everything except you know like the workshop so you're getting the concerts you're getting the parties you're getting the panels the show yeah you're getting all of that for and that's 115 and correct that's only for paid workshops there are some workshops with tracks that are mm-hmm. included with your admission yeah that's true yeah, yeah. That, that yeah to be clear this does not include like celebrity autographs or photo ops or anything like that i mean all that is a separate those are separate right. costs um so it doesn't it's not it's not that you know and obviously the hotel and everything else dragon con is still an expensive weekend uh, a pretty expensive weekend, but for the con itself, um, you know, I have heard uh, a few times that people leveling uh, insults at Dragon Con by saying that they're money grubbers, and I'm just like, they could charge twice this. They but, could uh, charge. But it was also twice this, and people would still like. It's just insane to me. Like you could, you could say it, uh, tickets were like. Two hundred and thirty dollars, and I'd still say that's a pretty good bargain. Well, also, like, let's you know compare it. Can can compare it to other big cons. Compare it to going to Disney. Yes, you know, absolutely. And also, Graceland. If you go to Graceland, it's like I think, uh, like, like more than this. But but also, let's compare it to if you think you can't commit to the full time of con, and you're like, well, I'll get a day pass. If you're gonna attend more than one day. It is still ch- cheaper to buy the five-day pass. 
Yes. Right exactly. now. Right now. Exactly. That yeah, will not yeah. be the case. I mean, as we get closer to con, this price is going to go up. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's going to go up in increments of, you know, $15, $20. We're not sure, but it's going to go up. So and look, let's also remember that this is pretty much 24 hours a day of programming. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You know, there um, might not be panels late at night, but there's, there's something hey, going on. There's late night raves. There's movie rooms where they're showing movies till like four o'clock in the morning. Two different mm-hmm. movie rooms, actually. There's, you know, late night bands. There's video games. There, right. There is something you can find something to do. Yes. At so, pretty much any time. So we right. definitely encourage people to lock down their memberships as soon as possible. Uh, because it's cheaper. And to Jen's point, even if you're thinking about going a day or so, um, it's worth it just to get that that out of the way. So you have the flexibility of going whenever you want. Yeah. So if you only want to go one day, you don't have to worry about, oh, I have to wait till one day passes are on sale. Maybe they'll sell out because sometimes a lot of times Saturday does sell out. So, you know, you still have that flexibility of going when you want and at, a, at almost the same price, I think, actually. So, uh, yeah. also, you, you know, when you buy day passes, you can't pick that pay it pass up till that day, right? It's like you can't go pick it up the day before. And, right. I, and I've seen people ask that a lot in, in the groups when, when the day passes come available, right? So, you spend most of your wait. time waiting for that, that line. waiting to pick up that pass, yeah, yeah. In, in that line. So, yeah, it, yeah, that's a good point, too. That's a good point, too. So, uh, also, but, okay, also, people, we're biased. Like, yes, we're biased. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You think? Yeah, but, but, it's, yeah. but it's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we, for, for over a decade, we've devoted, yeah. I've devoted my life to doing a yes. podcast about Dragon Con. So, yeah, yeah I love yeah. the show. Is yeah, it for yeah, everybody? Yeah. We're not affiliated with Dragon Con, but we do love it. So, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, we, we do love it. And, um, and yes, we're not saying that uh, it is beyond reproach, uh, but uh, yeah, we do love it. And yeah, if you're thinking about going, like get your membership early. Uh, get your membership, like I said, as soon as possible. And if you missed, happen to miss something at this year's con, uh, get your Dragon Con TV pass. Yes. Uh, it's only yes. ten dollars, and they have just started this past. I think it was just this past weekend. They have started uh, loading up some of the panels. Um, yeah. Uh, it, the app is a work in progress. I, I I know it's lacking in some places, uh, but uh, I think they said they were going to load up the panels in the order that they appeared at con. Oh uh, right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, I haven't, I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten my pass yet. I will. Uh, but yeah, it's $10 and I can watch stuff from con throughout the rest of the year. So, right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, and now, uh, we'll discuss real briefly. I don't want to go into too much detail because we can open up a whole can of worms here. Uh, but, um, <laughs> and we don't have that kind of time, but <laughs> host hotel hunger game. They are about to begin. Uh, in some ways, they've already <laughs> they've already started. Uh, and, but um, so, but yeah. Um, so the Marriott officially will have rooms available starting October second at ten a.m. And the DragonCon website today populated information about the Marriott. They don't have the pass key link yet, but. Uh, it does give you uh, information about the prices, different room types, and all that. Right. Yeah. Uh, Weston will be available October 29th, so at the end of October at 10 a.m. Uh, the other host hotels, Hyatt, Hilton, Cortland, uh, right now they are, uh, the legacy renewals are all sold out. So um, they're processing those. They may open up a, a small block of non-legacy. We have no information on when, if that may happen. Uh, but right now you're looking at two hotels uh, that everybody is going to try to get into. Well, so, I mean, also, the same time. to be fair, there's there's some other hotels, too. There are. Uh, there are people there are going to we'll, try it. People try to get into the Ritz. People try to get into the Indigo. Those are probably yes. also going to go up in October. Oh, so yes. so what so. we know about the uh, the Ritz Carlton, which is not an official host hotel, but it's close. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that will go on sale actually October first at nine a.m. Yeah, there you go. So yeah. we do know that. Uh, we also know that as far as the Indigo goes, they have uh, announced that uh, they haven't announced the exact date yet. 
but they said it will be right now it's scheduled to be the second week of October. So yeah. I guess uh, stay tuned for more information about that. Um, and other hotels like the Aloft, mm-hmm. uh, you'll have to call and get information for as well. I've heard different things. So I'm not going to tell anybody anything. Uh, I'm not going to quote anything. But look, if you're interested in getting a hotel uh, <laughs> close by, a host hotel oh, really? or any of a hotel around there, join the Dragon Con rooms, the Dragon Con connection. Uh, they have now a Discord. Um, For the Dragon Con connection. Dragon Con connection, yes. Yeah. So they will have up to date yes. information on all of that. So that is the best way I can say to help you uh, try to acquire a room. It's yeah. not easy. It's a pain. It's actually one of the worst things I think about Dragon Con is Easily. how difficult it is to get a room. Uh, yeah. and the stress and the stress that you have to go through. Yeah. Yeah, but and I would suggest join join both the room groups. You know, have as much information as you're at your hands as you can. Yes. Because it is not an be... easy process. And to be honest with you, last year it was like every single instance of every hotel had issues. Yes. <laughs> we we uh we documented it, we reported a little bit about it, but it was a nightmare across the board. Uh from what I and and some hotels were better than others, right. but um you know, there was a lot of a lot of things that went wrong last year. Hopefully they've learned from their mistakes and these will go uh much smoother this year. I know I'm trying to say that with a straight face. I'm 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 giggling, I'm giggling in Cortland. <laughs> you you are a Cortland supporter. Uh, no, I and I have my room booked, <laughs> or, but I'm or giggling. I, I'm but, g- giggling at how it was once again handled this year. It was better but, than last year, but there was still some craziness involved. Yeah, uh, Jen is a a supporter of the Cortland, but she is not an apologist for the Cortland. Yeah. <laughs> No, and I really try not to complain too much about them because I don't want to be one of the people that gets screwed over. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. They're looking I, up your name now. I've I've lucked out and like I haven't ended up in one of the mushroom rooms. Uh, uh, I haven't ended up with a broken AC. I did end up with a like our sink and our tub was did not want to drain this year, but I was like, I am not calling maintenance. I'm just gonna deal with this. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> you think they blacklist people who call maintenance? <laughs> I just didn't. I didn't want any reason for them to be like, "Oh, you really? No, we can't. You, you can't stay in this room, but mm-hmm. we don't have anywhere to put you. So we're gonna move you to the Omni." No. <laughs> the, the Cortland's big success is to rule by fear. So that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> that if people are if, if people talk back, then there goes their legacy. Boom. Right. <laughs> uh, well, no, no, be fair. We're not technically legacy. We just get f- first crack at mm-hmm. booking, but somebody always posts the link publicly. Of course. <laughs> oh, never um, fails. Yeah. You've got, you know, you've got thousands of people. But, uh, but see what it is. Yeah. The thing is, it it's someone staying there that's posting it. Yeah. Because we were mm-hmm. we were sent it by text. Well, they mm-hmm. said they're going to send it by text and email. Not everyone got, I, you know, some people got a text. Some people got an email. The people who got text, they were getting it staggered. And then mm-hmm. the people who were getting it emailed didn't get it emailed till four hours after the text started going out. And by then, yeah, someone had posted the link publicly. Yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. crazy. Um, yeah, it's, and, it's called and the Hunger Games for a reason. It is. Yeah. I mean, I just, like, actually, somebody I think at the Hunger Games Portland... was a lot more organized and uh, than this is. Like, yeah. I think the Hunger Games, you had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> you had a fighting chance. You knew uh, the rules of the Hunger Games too. They didn't change from year to year. Well, it was like from, from minute to week. minute. Well, it's like if you're going <laughs> to let your people who stay there book, like do it like the Hilton and Hyatt does. I mean, granted, now they they send out an email before you even get to con saying, Hey, you want your room for next year. But you know, it used to be everyone gets their own individual link. It's not the same link. 
that everyone can access. This year, uh, and I know we'll, we'll get into our 2024 review, but this year it was great because all the hotels had themes, you know, geek themes. Uh, I do wonder if they were we going to get to a point where they will embrace their geek theme. Like they will all just be Hunger Games themed. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. So that's, you know, that's the hotel information that we've got. Um, again, it's not a lot to help, but um, hopefully you guys can use those sources and and help get you situated for next year. Uh, we do understand that it's difficult. Um, if there's any way that we can help with that, shoot us an email, contact us, and you know we will see if we can look into. Uh, we will give things. you the right place to go. We, we will. We cannot we book the room for you. No, 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 yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no, no. Well, maybe yeah. for a fee. Uh, <laughs> for a fee. No, I don't want those problems. Even no. for a fee, I, don't I, want I was going to say, did I? Have we mentioned that we're looking for sponsors? Um, no, just... <laughs> so we, we can scratch the Cortland off that list, apparently, of possible sponsors. Um, so uh, there's been some dates floating around as well, as far as guest applications and everything like that. But to be honest with you, I'm not, I, I was not able to confirm that they are actually 2025 dates for, uh, for guests and everything like that. Usually guests, uh, the, the application opens around December. So uh, we'll see if that's the case this year. I would say, you know, just keep paying attention to, the official sources, because they will let you know. Um, right. And uh, we have gotten some dates that I guess are tentative, but we'll see for the volunteer meetings. Uh, uh, it was, that are they were posted in the volunteer group. So. In March, uh, March 22nd, the first volunteer meeting, Volunteer Appreciation Day, March 23rd, and then the second volunteer meeting, Saturday, July 20th. So, uh, so yeah, and look, it's never too early to look into volunteering. So right. those people who are interested in volunteering, uh, they're, you know, go to those sources and, and, you know, take a look. And I would say that also for, uh, if you're interested in participating in any tracks, like mm-hmm. look them, look them out, look them up now. Uh, it's not too early to start preparing for next year. Right. Um, and, uh, a lot of the tracks do still have programming throughout the year online, Yep. And and you can communicate with them that way as far as whether or not you want to be involved with that uh, track um, uh, and in any sort of capacity, uh, volunteering, paneling, helping come up with panels, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, all the panelists, I, I sorry, all the uh, track rooms are always looking for people. So, yes. Uh, so it's never too early to start participating in that. And it's also not too late to let them know what you thought of the programming from last year, from this Correct. past year, 2024. Last Yesterday, I went to the app and I, I checked this out myself. You can still rate and comment on events that happened in, in 2024. So if you haven't done so and you really like the panel or maybe something went wrong with a particular panel or the way that the line was structured to get into the panel or you had any issues whatsoever, isolated to these events that are in the app, use that tool. I know for a fact that the higher ups and all the track directors look at those and they pay attention to the comments and feedback they get through the app. So if you have not yet done so, and you've got something on your mind on a positive or negative way, use the app to do so. For example, if you don't like the music at a party, (laughs) the place to say that it's in the mm-hmm. app. Oh, save, save that one. You got to save that one for your big finale. Then. I was going to say, uh, yeah. I was say, are we going there already? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll, changes... I'll, I'll, I'll take over for the next 20 minutes if we go there right now. Yeah. So, changes have been made. Based that is where you app. rate stuff. Yes. All right. If you think so, somebody sucks, do it there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I did. Um, you know, I've seen various tracks and uh, and even the newbies group, you know, they posted like, hey, let us have feedback on what you thought we did great uh, this year and everything like that. And I would encourage the same thing from people who listen to us or watched us throughout the year. If they have feedback from some of the things we did right or some of the things we did wrong, let us know because um, we, we do appreciate that. Um, but please don't use it as an open forum to just complain about 
everything that you didn't like about Dragon Con <laughs> because I have seen that uh, I have seen that turn into that kind of thing. And while it's kind of interesting to get that feedback, there's nothing we can really do about a lot of that stuff. Uh, so, um, but um, yeah. So anyway, uh, that's all the information I think we have about 2025. So uh, I guess, Jen, we'll take a quick break for those people who are listening, right? And then come back and talk about 2024. Come listen to the 42 cast. It's your ultimate answer to fandom, geekiness, and everything. And you can only find it on the ESO network. Here, I had ChatGPT write the new Flopcast promo. Okay. Narrator, the Flopcast is making waves in the comedy world. Join hosts Jenny and Kevin as they dive into <laughs> pop culture from retro TV to comic books. With their quirky banter and infectious laughter, the Flopcast will have you laughing out loud and reminiscing. Tune in every week for fun, friendship, and fond memories. Who the heck is Jenny? There we go. All right. So All right. Three seconds have passed. <laughs> We're back, and uh, and uh, yeah, now we can get started with our uh, thoughts and reviews of Dragon Con 2024. Channing, um, we'll start with you. Overall, how was how was this year's experience for you? Um, overall, definitely, I'm gonna go um, scale of one to ten. I'm gonna go. 8.59 um it was very busy most of that was just kind of some poor planning on my part um i'm gonna go ahead and dip my toe into the hotel waters and say hilton stepped their game up this year with their elevators it really seemed odd at first but they had employees sometimes security working the elevators and at certain busy times, they disabled the buttons. So only the elevator operators could um, operate the elevators. And it was kind of like police. They had their own routes that they traveled. So, you know, this elevator, it would hit, just for example, the odd numbered floors. This elevator, it hits the even numbered floors. And when they explain it to you, it doesn't seem like it works, but it really did. It cut down a lot of the congestion since there were operators in the elevator they were truly maximizing the space and just kind of said, okay, we got to stop. We can't let anybody else squeeze on here. Um, yeah, they, they really did well with the elevator thing. Um, food prices, that's a different story for a different day. Look, I get it. Everything at a hotel is marked up. It's, 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 it is basic economics, but $15 for a personal size pizza that is just dough, cheese, and pepperoni. But, but it, what, what, why are you eating at the hotel? Well, this is one of those things. Some of this, was, again, was poor planning on my part. <laughs> I had a situation where there was like an hour between panels. It's like, crap, can't go leave. And yeah, yeah. So, so again, I, I accept some personal responsibility on this. But they have they have a captive audience, and they know it. Um, and plus, I wanted food, food. Like, we had... Our room did not have a microwave, so we were limited in what we could have in. And it's like, okay, I cannot have another granola bar or bag of trail mix or anything. Let me try to find something hot. And that was my option. So I understand it, but it doesn't make it any easier to shell out that kind of money. Um, that and the $9 water um, at the Bunny Hutch party, which that's a Marriott thing, not the Bunny Hutch thing. But... You know, I'd had a few adult beverages and just said, OK, I should probably get some water. They didn't have any water coolers in there. I expected to pay three or four. When I went there and the dude told me eight, I, yeah, I was like, maybe should I risk alcohol poisoning? What's I was truly worried for a minute. <laughs> but um, no, it was great. I did five or six panels and I was I participated in two photo shoots. So actually, you know, got dressed up and went and then just kind of bouncing around and helping out some other people with things. It, it was a lot of fun. And I think it was also good because I got to see some of my non Dragon Con friends who a couple of them I've converted into Dragon Con friends. So they live in Atlanta. Dragon Con just isn't their thing. But I've had one they showed up this year and another. I, I've just about got them ready to purchase a ticket for next year. So. You know, I'm trying to add to the crowd. 
Oh, great. Oh, yes, well. I did make it to the con crawl for the first time, too. And Brandon, might I just say, you, sir, were, were an MVP this year. Um, if you have a, a cash app or Venmo, let me know. I will contribute to the fund for next year. That, that translation, Ch- Channing found the, the, the box of the tiny bottles. Yes. Yes. And Ch- oh, and Channing got to try the pie. Yes, I did. Yeah. I, I did. So, yeah, this was a year first for me. Uh, first Tiki Party, first pie, first tiny bottles, first time as a <laughs> featured guest. Uh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Those were Dave's tiny bottles. Oh, okay. I'm so I'm <laughs> so sorry, Dave. I, I just I just saw the man who was handing them out. So <laughs> you, you got you got a label better, man. You got a brand. <laughs> no, but I yeah, I really enjoyed it. I can go into specifics later, but I don't want to cut in anybody else's time. But um, the crowds were manageable um, compared to years past. I feel like Saturday was probably the big pack today but that's dragon con it's well that's the day the the fire marshal shut down the skywalks exactly yeah i feel like at this point if you don't expect a crowd on saturday um you you don't know anything about dragon con yeah i i've now gotten where i avoid the marriott after 5 p.m on saturday yeah the uh yeah the yeah i I guess i should have read this off too at the beginning but uh yeah with the uh official press release said that dragon con attracted seventy two thousand attendees at closing ceremonies they they upped that to 75k uh for the five day week uh, weekend they also raised more than two hundred and ten thousand dollars for arthritis foundation uh the georgia chapter which is great and they attracted more than uh, 3,950 uh, 3, donors for the blood drive, which those are just staggering numbers all the way around. Uh, but uh, the main one is that this is, uh, you know, 72, 75,000, whatever you're looking at, um, as far as, you know, uh, at, at attendees and true attendees and whatnot. Right. Um, this was the biggest one we've had since 2019. Um, I have no reason to think that they are not going to try to reach 2019 numbers next year. Uh, I could definitely see them saying, you know what, this was okay. We can go up to 80. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll, well, it's going to get bigger and it's going to get a lot more people. Um, and there were times that it felt like there was a lot of people, a lot of people. But there were other times that I, I thought they managed the crowd pretty well. So, um, yeah. so yeah, we can we can talk a little bit more about that. But uh, but I'm interested in hearing about Jen's uh, overall weekend. Uh, so I don't. Yeah, let's blame it on the lack of sleep starting it off. But um, <laughs> I uh, out of the six nights that I was at Con, I was back in my hotel room by 11 p.m. Pretty much four, four of those nights, three, at least three of them, um, which is really lame for me. But uh, yeah, I also had to start using a cane by Friday morning and had to use the cane for the majority of the rest of the con. So it probably has something to do with it. This is the first year my body said, um, hey, you're a fall risk. <laughs> Your knee's going to lock up and you're going to go down. So that was a bit weird to have to adjust to. Um, uh, but if, uh, I may, I, if, if I may say so, though, Jen, because I spotted you a few times after that, and that that cane did not slow you down. <laughs> <laughs> I needed you were, you were still time. you were still on the go doing <laughs> all sorts of things. I I, I give you all the props in the world because I know that it, it must have been uh, not comfortable, but man, it did not, you did not let it slow you down. Right. Well, I can't, I, mean, I have a schedule <laughs> yeah. to keep to. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Look, she had to, she had to do a countdown. Well, the cane no, was after that, but yeah, still. The, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> she, I didn't make it to the countdown. She didn't do the countdown. And I didn't do the countdown. No, but yeah. So uh, yeah, Thursday morning, well, Thursday, because we can't, when you're media, you, you don't get your badge till two o'clock. So as soon as I, I got my badge, then I went and got my BS sticker, and then I beelined to the IV station because they were opening at three on Thursday and got um, 
a combination B12 Toradol shot. Toradol is a mild painkiller. Um, that saved me. I, I feel like if I hadn't gotten that, I would have... I would have not have been able to recover Oof. and get through. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to recover from the lack of sleep and just not feeling good from the Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, yeah, I was still tired on some nights and had to go to bed or earlier than I wanted to. But uh, just getting getting rid of a bit of the knee pain and uh, mm. the nausea yeah. uh, and having that hit of, of the B12, got, like... Within an hour, I felt normal, and I did wow. not feel normal before it, and that's yeah. that's what I needed, especially for Thursday, because you know it's the tiki party day, and it's become my favorite thing of con. And then now Thursday's even better because I made it to the 120 minutes party, and it was only it's, you know it's only its second year that this happened. That is the best party I have been to, like dance party at con I have been to since. My first year in 2010. Wow. That is high praise. That is high uh, praise. You now, know, what is I, 120 minutes party for people who don't know. So 120 minutes used to be a show on uh, MTV, you know, early 90s, and it would come on after 11 o'clock at night, and that's where you would see like the crazy videos, like from The Cure and uh, Echo and the Bunnymen and Depeche Mode, and uh, you'd find <laughs> out other new wave bands that <clears throat> you hadn't discovered. Uh, I, and like, you could definitely not. That's probably why I needed to start using the cane the next day, actually, because as soon as we got in there, I danced until they kicked us out of the room. <laughs> um, so, uh, and I even, I messaged Brandon because he had to crawl somewhere else. And he's like, we might try to get in this party. I was like, no, y'all need to come in here now. <laughs> so he brought the, the the later night people who were still a part of the con crawl. And they all came in there. And then, yeah, like we all stayed in there until the party was over. <laughs> and I could have, like, if that party had gone for another an hour, I would have stayed there another wow. hour. And so I really have, and I, you know, I rated it the app. Um, that would have been 180 minutes. Uh, right. so, yeah. <laughs> so, <gotta> rename it. <laughs> uh, I hope that they bring it back next year because that's going to become a part of my Thursday rotation and I'll yeah. get there earlier. Right. Um, because I think it started at 10, although I think I still might have been at Trader Vic's till then. Um, because Sven didn't get there till late to his own party <laughs> so, uh, he was setting up his booth uh oh kevin says it's his understanding that they will be doing it again next year awesome mm -hmm. i hope i hope you're able to do it again every year yes. so that Sounds everyone like can discover great job, dj and kevin um so yeah that that was it was a great party uh the trader vicks uh, patio bar has con continues to be the best bang for your bunk if you want to drink at con, um, especially they, uh, for a lot of the days when I went in there, they had the Mai Tais on sale for $7, um, which, you know, by con drink standard is an insane price. It's cheaper uh, than water. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, no doubt. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I still because I think uh, my husband when we went to the 120 minutes party, my husband went and got drinks at the Pulse Bar, and he came back. He was like three drinks, seventy five dollars, and I was like, we just got rum and cokes. I was like, holy shit! I was like, yeah, we can we can each get a drink for you know eleven anywhere from depending on what you're drinking, seven to twelve bucks each at the Trader Vic's patio. So there was a lot, a large part. Like when we would leave the Hilton, we would still go send a runner back to the Hilton to get us more drinks because of how um, more affordable it was. Okay, that is a brilliant idea, and I will be stealing that next year. <laughs> <laughs> Taking auditions for a drink runner. Wow. Yeah. Um, let's say I, I was on three panels this year. Uh, that's the most I've ever been on in one year. I was part of one group photo shoot. I made it into four out of the five costumes I brought, brought, um, and I am still not unpacked. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, 
Wait a minute. Our our whole episode is called Unpack. Well, let's yeah. unpack. So uh, I, uh, my, I got everything out of my suitcases, but I, I use um, you know, the packing bags, you know, mm-hmm. where you can put stuff yeah. in them and then z- uh, vacuum seal them down so they take up less space. Uh, so they're all uh, most of the stuff is still in all of its little <laughs> packs. Um, I have unpacked most of my swag. The, I found a lot of swag this year. I've unpacked most of the things I bought because mm-hmm. um, I bought some fragile things. And I was like, you are, I am not breaking my tiki bugs. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then I uh, hung out in Atlanta for a few more days and came home with COVID. So mm. yeah, two years in a row. Oh, I'm so sorry. And now I, I, I yeah. And then, the street next year, and then please. COVID turned into a bacterial infection in both eyes. Hence, why I look a little plainer than usual to our viewers out there. I can't even wear my glasses. Uh, so we will get to it, Dave. We're going through a list that we made. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I'm trying not to jump ahead of everybody. Uh, yeah, hey, I mean, Dave got yeah. called out. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> he said shame. <laughs> see, see, he's shaming me. Uh, the um, yeah, we will try to get to everything, but it's difficult. I mean, but both me and Channing both have a paragraph written about your announcement, Dave. Don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna get to it. Absolutely, uh, you, you 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 do matter. It's amazing talking about something that nobody was allowed to talk about. Um, <laughs> 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 he's like hey we don't talk about that party um but, but now i guess we we can um right. so, to be uh, fair we did have him on the show uh last season to talk to not about, talk about the party to, yeah right. to, yeah to not talk about it yeah. <laughs> all right well how about you mr mike the uh this one was this one this one was special um for a number of reasons uh but i think the main reason for me I mean, I did uh, participate in a lot of panels. I think I was on 12 total, uh, which on Saturday was was the most insane. I think I had five or six pad- panels on Saturday. Now I had five panels in for the host hotels. Yeah, you need to you need to to arrange that better next year. So that yeah, was dude. a lot of like back and forth, back and forth. I wish I had gotten some sort of reader to figure out how many steps i did because it was crazy uh but all the panels were a blast uh i had so much fun uh on each one of the panels and uh um so i i you know even though i i I do a lot of them uh it's hard to say no because there's so much fun um but it does take me away from the table a lot of times and this year uh, being at the table was important to me because of the new book, right. uh, because Dragon Tales, uh, as you mentioned, Channing earlier, uh, Dragon Tales came out and uh, before the show and I had copies to sell and I had so many people come up. Many of the people that came up to buy it uh, were listeners or watchers of this podcast. And I cannot thank you enough for your support of the book and the charities involved uh, for supporting that. Um for the, this project, because it has been an absolute labor of love to do. Um, and it was received very well. Uh, there were a lot of emotional moments for me at, at Dragon Con this year because of, uh, because of doing, working on the book. And, uh, uh, and I wanted to make sure too, that, I mean, so much happens at Dragon Con. You can, it's easy to get swept up in this, that, and the other thing. Um, I often come around, I, I also, I often come out with, you know, after the, at the weekend's over, I'm like, wow, I didn't get pictures of half the stuff I did <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I, or, or a 10th of the great cosplay that I saw or this, that, or the other thing. And I wanted to make sure that this year I made a concerted effort, uh, to make sure I took pictures. If, if I took any pictures, it was going to be with people. Uh, there are people that I associate with Dragon Con. There are people that I only see at Dragon Con, even if they're local, even if they only live like five miles from me here. Um, and uh, 
they, yeah, they are members of uh, this tribe that uh, I've grown to love over the past 30 years that I've been, you know, going to Dragon Con. And uh, I, I just wanted to focus on that. And I think in that way, it made this year a lot more special. I'm glad that we got to connect uh, for as brief a time as we did, uh, the two, the three of us. Um, and uh, I got to see, I got to, I got to see all the, I got to get the day one. I got to get all the Massachusetts Kevins together, which was amazing to me, which only makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I appreciate all of them indulging me and taking time out of their busy schedules to indulge my little fantasy of having uh, these three people um, that I I associate with Dragon Con that I love uh, so much um, together. Uh, We even got a few of the Michaels together uh so um a lot of a lot of great moments uh and like i said the book was a a great success we um we sold out of all the copies that i brought uh it's been selling well on amazon which is still available there you can get it there hint hint uh um hardcover and softcover both available on amazon and there will be a digital release pretty soon I, i need to get that straightened out by the end of the month uh but um yeah i cannot i cannot thank people enough for uh for being involved with the book all the contributors that i i that were there it was great to connect with them. There were a lot of contributors that I didn't get a chance to connect with. So I, uh, I'm i sorry. And I will have your copies sent to you <laughs> with pretty soon. I just ordered some more books. So hopefully those will be coming in the next week or so. So I will actually have some on hand to, to uh, distribute to the contributors as well as to have with me at other shows that I do. But um, yeah, um, to Channing's point, this was the first time I stayed at the Hilton. I have mm-hmm. stayed at the other host hotels, except for the Cortland Grand. Um, mm-hmm. I have not stayed there yet, but this is the first time I stayed at the Hilton. I was a bit concerned because it's so far away from uh, the America's Mart that yeah, I thought it, there are shortcuts. There, there was there was going it was going to be an issue, but I found, especially with all the panels that I was doing, some of those panels were in the Hilton. Brit tracks, thank you. Uh, so that made it pretty easy for me to uh, to just sort of roll out of bed and go to my panels uh, sometimes, or that would be the last thing I did. You know, I'd go to the hotel, do the panel, and then go up to my room. Um, I don't know exactly why. I've heard a couple different stories as to why the Hilton had to or employed the, uh, uh, the idea of having uh, elevator attendants. But to Channing's point, it worked. Um, there was never, you never had to wait more than 10, 15 minutes for, uh, an elevator. They made sure that, um, disabled folks got on. Uh, and unfortunately when it's, when it's not attended, that area is not attended. That doesn't happen as much as you would love it to happen. Um, so I, I think that, uh, uh, yeah. I, I did um I did have to pay for hotel food at the Hilton and yeah I did have to take out a loan in order to do that so uh, to your point Jen, I, I do think that some of those are overpriced but I was too passed out to to go anywhere so it was like I'm at the Hilton this is where I'm yeah. staying uh, this is where I'm eating um, yeah ca- captive audience yeah exactly I, I you know you pay for the convenience right. Well, I, I did it. I ate at the pop up Aviva table they had there, but to mm-hmm. me, that was worth it. Mm, that mm-hmm. would have been nice. And I've heard good things about the 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 Hilton restaurant. I've actually in years past eaten there, but I I have not experienced that. And um, I never made it down to Trader Vic's, which uh, is I'm, odd. It is right. odd for me, sure. <laughs> uh, and I had panels when the tiki party was going on on Thursday. So that I missed out on that. Um, so there's always something that you miss, you know, there's a lot of things that I wish I could have done. Um, but you know, that's the problem. That's, that's the, <laughs> that's the wonderful thing about dragon con is it's such an embarrassment of really great things to do. There's no way you can do it all. Yeah. Right. And I learned a long time ago, 
you can't just sit around going, man, I wish I could have done that or wish I done that. You just have to enjoy it for what it is. And uh, everything that I did this year was, uh, it was a great time. So uh, yeah. I really um, appreciate uh, everybody who came by the table and bought not just that book, but even just came by to say hi and uh, talk about the Dragon Con report. I got more people coming up to me about to talk about the Dragon Con report podcast than any other year that we've done it. Um, and uh, I'm sorry you didn't get any of that direct feedback, Jen, because you deserve a lot of it, I think. Um, yes. yeah. and, we, we, and, you didn't have and, to bring that up on air. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I I think that um, uh, that uh, it, it's just amazing that uh, we have that community. So yeah. uh, everybody listening, everybody watching, Thank you so much. Um, and as I mentioned at the con, and I've I mentioned this every time we record, we love feedback. And we don't just want feedback while we're at Dragon Con. As a matter of fact, it's mm-hmm. kind of hard to process feedback while we're at Dragon Con because there's so many other yes. things happening. So yes. please, throughout the year, let us know when there's something that we're doing that either you don't like or there's something you want covered mm-hmm. that we haven't covered yet or you know followed up with. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. there was some sad news that I heard that, uh, I must, uh, I must single you out, uh, indirectly for this Channing, because, um, I understand that, um, the good guys lost <laughs> at Dragon Con wrestling, that DCW is, uh, now under the command of, uh, <laughs> of the um the heelish character and i think it's because the mongoose never showed up uh to be fair channing was drinking with me when wrestling was happening no, no, that, <laughs> that's not fair <laughs> to, to be clear that's not fair <laughs> drinking with jen cost the good guys a loss because <laughs> well, now it's... now i am not saying that the mongoose and channing are the same person but there was no communication to let the mongoose know that he was needed at this critical event. So now we don't know the whole, you know, it's up in the air. What's going to happen to Dragon Con wrestling? Now. But it, I mean, it's in the hands of, I mean, we, he, we had him on the show. He's yeah. an, he's a maniac. We don't yes. know what's going to happen with the, with the, with the wrestling now. So, um, uh, and just, and just for our that, listeners out that, there, that doesn't mean wrestling won't happen. Wrestling is still there. Yes, I yes, mean, yes. We don't know who's to say. So we're going to have to follow it's, up. I mean, it's already been confirmed. Wrestling I mean, I, will I, be I, back. I think, I think we're going to uh, have to do a follow up. As much as as reprehensible as having that person on our show was, mm-hmm. uh, got to bring him back. We we're going to have to do a follow up and see what what things he has planned for his mm-hmm. new vision of uh yes. dcw but uh yeah unfortunately good guys came up short so well i i can speak for this yes i was drinking with jen the mongoose was actually in line for dcw i don't know if somebody <laughs> like cut his access or anything but he could not get backstage so uh-huh. he had to wait in line with the other people and look dcw is popular he just could not make it in but i will say this the mongoose cool guy he likes to be the hero i think he's kind of happy with the fact that the heels are now in charge because now he can truly be the hero and come in and defeat them and knock them from power because the only thing that's better than stopping someone from getting power is letting them get power and then snatching it away from him oh, so man. We're yeah gonna see yeah, where this yeah. goes that's, that's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. i don't we'll, know if we'll, you can if you can cash that check you're writing but right 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 <laughs> right right <laughs> Hey, Mongoose, he, he's his own thing. He, he's his own but thing. as 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 uh, as disappointed as I was hearing that news, I will say I was really uplifted to read the story of uh, I believe uh, she goes by cosplay Kamala that wrote about your involvement with her chanting and and getting her to uh, to sort of uh, make yes. that make that cosplay happen and to a great success. So. 
that was that was really nice to see that uh, you had yes. that positive impact on 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 a person there. Yeah, it, that was that was great. And look, Dragon Con in and of itself is is apolitical, and I respect that. And they should stay apolitical. Absolutely. But that does not mean that political statements or memes don't pop up. And um, there's a, a woman, Leanne Lord. She's a comedian. She's done stand ups on Showtime and some other shows. And she's been coming to Dragon Con for a few years. She's been on the skeptic track. And we were just having a little Thursday night thing, hanging out. And she mentioned how people mentioned that she has a passing resemblance to current vice president and presidential candidate Kamala Harris. And, you know, after some talking, she was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. And she showed up to our photo shoot dressed up as Kamala Harris and people lost their minds, but in a good way. And it's, it's funny. She I mean, she says it best in the story, but she mentioned people were literally coming up to her and kind of saying the things that they want to say to Vice President Harris, but they were saying it to her. And it was kind of cathartic for him. Um, I have not seen it, but there's a video of her walking in to um, the diversity track party and they played Beyonce's song Freedom, which is what Kamala Harris uses on the campaign trail. And there's video of her walking in and the crowd just going wild. Mm -hmm. Um, So if anyone has that video, uh, please, by all means, send me the link. Um, Yeah, that was that was definitely um, a really good, fun moment. Um, I also got to say, as far as political cosplays, that was the only one I saw this year, which was um, a little shocking, but also um, a little refreshing also. Um, well, I think po- the Olympics it, it, it divisive. Took over. Was that? Yeah, the Olympics, the Olympics really. Kind of took over. Oh, yeah, yeah. This was Olympics. <laughs> this was, I wanted to do an Olympic cosplay. And I mean, just didn't have the amount time. of creative pole vaulter uh, yeah. costumes I saw, I got, I I giggled now, loudly every time I saw them. I only saw one pole vaulter cosplay, but I saw like 30 Australian breakdancer cosplays. Yeah. 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 I saw about and, 10 um, of the Turkish shooter. Yes, Turkish shooter. Yes. I saw one of the. I uh, think they Korean had their own shooter. photo shoot groups, right? They, well, like, they had it for the, the whole Olympic group. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And yes, yeah, Sarah's right. Has Been Hotel was really big this year, but that wasn't a big surprise for me. Um, I saw two two Dune Bucket cosplays. I saw five. Really? (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I, I I saw, I saw a couple of Dune Bucket ones, but then I also saw some worm ones that were sandworm Mm -hmm. ones that were pretty funny. I thought there was, there was also, there was a girl who cosplayed as Nicole Kidman for the AMC commercial. I saw that one. With the Dune popcorn bucket. Yes. Yeah, I saw that one. I saw that one. And she even, um, I saw she did a video where she was like doing the commercial. Yes. And they were setting it up like that. But uh, how did I, your uh, Black Geeks of Cosplay photo shoot go? Oh, dear Lord. There was so much going on. Um, This year we did the photo shoot and we also, we submitted I want to say about six different panel ideas to different tracks. Mm -hmm. And I think five of them got picked up. So um, we were really excited about that because we got a chance to have some, um, not just panels about diversity, but panels about things, about just regular things that just happen to have diverse people on it. Yeah. Um, So we had um, a voice actor panel where I got to talk to three up and coming voice actors. You know, don't get me wrong. We didn't have, Cree Summer, anybody there, but we had working voice actors talking about how they got in the business, how they find work, how they prep their voice. And that was two women of color and one man who's a member of the LGBTQ community. So a very nice mix, really well received. Um, we had the Being a Blurred panel um, that was done by Skip over at Blurred Over, but I was on that one. Um, oddly enough, Leanne Lord was on that panel too, and she was dressed as Ida B. Wells. So that was really <laughs> a, an interesting dichotomy up there. <laughs> um, we helped promote um, the Cosplay Your Way party on the diversity track, which was amazing because even though it was in a smaller room, it had the vibe of a house party. 
Yeah. Right down to the fact that it was about a hundred degrees in the room. <laughs> from all the body heat. Yes. Yes. Yeah. From all the body heat. I, I may have been one of the most popular people there just because every now and then I'd see somebody who was hot and they didn't have a water cooler in the room, but there was one outside and I was literally going and it was empty. I was scooping ice out and just bringing ice to people. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, so in addition to cosplay medics, maybe next year we need to have like ice medics or water medics or something. Um, the photo shoot, as always, was great. Um, again, it was a party, not a protest. The weather held up. I have not been able to get an accurate count. I've been trying to use some of the different AI counters. Mm -hmm. But right now, it's somewhere between 330 and 400 people. Yeah, we've Ooh, been trying yeah. to count the Mrs. Roper group. Oh, it's oh, that difficult was because yeah. there's it's all red wigs. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. We're, we're having yeah. to wait for some more high definition photo. We know that we beat last year. We mm -hmm. we and we are pretty sure we're over, we were over four hundred. Yeah, we had a dancing Mrs. Roper at um, the cosplay your way party that I do yeah. have video of. So I will have to um to try to share that one with you. Yet yeah, Mrs. Roper's were big this year. Mrs. Roper's may be the new Harley Quinns. Well, it's only the, the <laughs> second year for the yeah. Roper group at DragCon. Right. Um, and. <laughs> I am now one of the group leads for next year. <laughs> so <laughs> I get to be a, a Roper Wrangler. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm now uh, one of the admins of the group, and I'm going to help set up our schedule for Sunday next year, help set right. up the photo shoot. Uh, so that's you know, something, something new to add to the schedule. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, because you don't have enough to do. Right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. You want a little bit more. Uh, I yeah, get it. But uh, D. Coble, who started the, the group last year, it, so we actually live in the same city. Um, but she, she, you know, she also runs uh, the Resident Evil, one of the Resident Evil groups. And she wants to be able to devote her organ, organize, organizational time to that. And uh, so I was yeah. like, yeah, I can I can help. I'm, that, that's, yeah, that's I'm gonna not show. I, I will show up with some microphones, yeah, and, or microphones. Uh, um, megaphones. Megaphones. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and uh, I can be loud when needed. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah th this was our group, and you can see it's cut off from the sides, and we had people standing on little small stairs off to the right. Yeah, y'all might um, have to. That's, is that the biggest steps? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that's that, uh, actually uh, our Kamala Harris right there in the middle, front middle in the blue. Oh, yeah, I see her, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that one was a huge one, and, and the Fallout group was just ginormous. I ex I mean, Fallout has a good following, I so, but I expected it to pick up some because of the show. I didn't think it was going to be that big this year. Um, shout out to Bill um, Waters and Dragon Con photo shoots for getting a really good shot of them. I have to see if I can track it down. They took, they legitimately filled up two sets of steps. Yeah. Yeah. Which was ridiculous. I mean, that is, yeah. That is crazy. But I think a lot of the, I mean, a lot of the photo groups, we, we've seen it more and more the past two years that they're, the amount of people showing up for them are surprising people. Yes. Mm. You know, yes. you, we all know how Facebook event pages are. You can't really rely yeah. on what the numbers say, like people say they're attending or interested. So a lot of us don't know what's going to happen until until we get there. Yeah. Until we see. Yeah. But, and I, loved, I was joking with someone um, how photo shoots are still the most unofficial but official part of dragon con because i mean all the photo shoots are fan group run but even just a couple of years ago dragon con said okay we're finally going to put these things in the app just to help um i know some people that that's their main thing that they come for just like there's some people who may only do a certain track there's some people who are just there to either participate in or take pictures at the photo shoots yeah those are the people bringing like 14 costumes right exactly mm -hmm. but, you know and i've i've gotten i think the most i did was 10 one year Mm -hmm. But then I was just like, okay, I literally can't do anything else. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because um, I'm spending all my time changing costumes. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, shout out to My Myron. I think he only had like nine this year. Um, he goes by Smooth Cosplayer. 
Um, this is not him, but I do love a good mashup cosplay. Mm-hmm. So when I saw Randy Macho Man DeLorean, I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, got to. Got to. And yes, there was a lack of Deadpools this year, Mark. I don't know if maybe the Deadpools... Well, they did still do their conga line. Yeah, but I I mean, I'm just used to seeing Deadpools all over, not just at the Deadpool events. And it did seem just during my random walking, I didn't see as many. I noticed I kept seeing the same one. Really? Uh, Yeah, he was, um, he brought uh, the skeleton of Wolverine with him. Oh, geez. You know, and when it was dug up from the grave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I saw him a lot. But I think that's kind of how con works, that once you see somebody towards the beginning of when you get to con. Yes. They're now, you're like, you've seen them. So your eye is going to be drawn to them if you see them again. Right. Uh, uh, so. Yeah, it is one of those weird things that happens. It seems like there's some people that you just don't see at all. Right. And then there's other people that you see constantly, like almost every day. Uh, yeah. So, and it's, yeah, it seems random. Um, right. But uh, I think I got some pictures of some decent cosplay, and there was certainly excellent cosplay to be had. Most of the time, although I, you know, especially since, since I was doing that running around with panels on Saturday, um the uh most of the most of the great cosplay i saw was in habit trails so i was like i can't you know right. can't take yes. pictures there you just gotta go that was cool <laughs> yes <laughs> let it go on by yes well or uh, you know you do you can video you can video yes but uh, by the which, time i I'm, see it i'm not well, coordinated yeah. enough to get my act together like i would just see the back of their head like that would all my videos would be the back of them <laughs> if if that uh because by the time i got my act together i'd be like yeah so but it is it is interesting like i have videoed myself going through the habit trails before just to because that is fun to watch especially like after like years after con's over and just right. watch these videos and because with the habit trails you just never like it's just a stream of people coming at you and you have no idea what you're going to see from cosplay to cosplay and person to person. It's or just, when, a, when a sing-along will break out. Like, those are my favorite times. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. I do want to bring up a few things before we wind down uh, the show. All One right. is, hey, listeners, y'all are used to us ending our seasons with this episode that we're recording right now. That is not the case this year. Um, we we are going to start doing more episodes. So we will be back in October for episode 11 of this season. Um, we're uh, going to talk to a few tracks and get some people to come on, tell us how their track grew this year and what have you. So, and then we might be back in November. We're going to see how next month goes, but there are so many things at con and so many people who help make it great. And we just think we need more episodes to be able to showcase those people and help keep building up hype for uh, con all year long. So we will be back next month. Uh, we don't know the date yet, but uh, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, also, I want to, I'm going to try not to rant too much about this. Okay, so after con, and this happens every year, but, you know, people make complaints. And a lot of times, there some people complained about some of the parties and DJs and what was played by the DJs. So, A, I want to remind people, uh, let people know in the, in the app. Let, go to the track, who threw that party, rate it, tell them what you didn't like about the DJ and all that. But I do, I would do want to bring up that one con is aware because it was actually brought up in the closing ceremony. They are going to work on more diverse music for each of the parties. Uh, You can also get, uh, you can go to the cult of the con uh, cult of DC DJs. You can talk to them about what type of music you would like to hear at parties and so that they can, you know, try to build what they're playing ahead of time. Uh, I do want to remind everybody the DJs are not paid. They are volunteers, just like 
just like everybody else, they're not getting paid. So all the light shows you see and uh, visuals that are put on there, the equipment that's being brought by the DJs themselves. Mm -hmm. They, they are trying to do their best, but, and also they're being told by the tracks. um, If it's a track party, the, the, you know, the people with the track kind of direct the way the music goes to. So that's, that's another avenue. You can, you can talk to the tracks and, request that different types of music are played but you know instead of saying the dj sucks you know go to the go to the places where it can make a difference and and be more specific why does the dj suck <laughs> you know because like if a dance floor is full at a party then people don't think anything's wrong but if it you know if you think there needs to be other types of music, but give examples, you know, that's the best way that things can, can get changed, you know, be specific in the types of music you want to hear played and let them know before con. Um, yeah. Cause then they have a chance to put that in their playlists. Uh, if you, I know that there's been some <clears throat> complaints about some parties, like they're named after a theme. So you go to the party and you expect there to be a theme, but then, the music has nothing to do with the theme, bring that up as well. Uh, give them examples of how they can uh, theme the music to that party. Uh, and also, uh, you know, when there's hotel DJs, those aren't hired by the con. So like who you see on the Hilton back patio, who you see in the Hilton lobby, those those are hired by the hotels. So then you have to go to the hotel, you know, right. send customers on you know, that customer service, whoever it is you message hotels about uh, and let them know mm -hmm. uh, if you don't like what's being played there. Yeah. And this is much nicer way of putting it than I <laughs> was originally going to do. Um, but, or, or, you know, all, all for the DJ yourself. You, you know, well, well and uh, <laughs> the, the, the mm -hmm. cult of the DC, DC DJs is there to help if you are interested in being a DJ at DragonCon. Uh, they actually have a form on their website now that you can submit to. They can help get you in touch with the people, uh, with the different tracks, with the different parties, help find a spot for you, help get you to prepare, prepare to be able to DJ at con. Um, so they're, they are listening as best, you know, they're, they're trying to fix what's being played as best they can, but you know, they, they need more specific feedback and, you know, Tell them, tell them what you want to hear. Uh, but again, Khan, Khan is aware of the complaints. They, they are going to be working on more diverse music for next year or more diversity in, in each of the parties so that, you know, yeah. each party doesn't sound the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I Which, you know, and that's another reason why I enjoy the 120 minutes party so much. Cause when I went there and I was like, okay, this is what I danced to in high school when I went to clubs. So I was right. like, this is, this is for me. <laughs> right. Like, that's the music I want to hear when I go dancing. Yeah. And and I, I, think I want everyone important. to have that party, that type yeah. of party. Go yeah, ahead, I've talked to some track directors and some DJs and yeah, they do listen. Um, yeah. I think I put DJs are kind of the MVPs and you're right. This is what the app is for. Actual changes have been made because of enough feedback in the app. So well, and, by all and, means, and yeah, talking, leave some constructive feedback. And yeah. talking to the tracks that are hosting yeah. those parties because, yeah. you know, that's that's who's helping organize it. Um, also at the closing ceremony, uh, Khan is also aware that part of the reason it seems so crowded this year is that somehow a lot of people were getting in without badges. I saw a few of them my, myself. Um, they are working on what, uh, ways to address that uh still no early badge pickup meaning no no uh pickup on wednesday they are already making plans for the 40th anniversary of con that's not next year though uh mm -hmm. and they are looking to have a new app provider in two years <laughs> so uh but they are aware that the app can be wonky and they are not going to officially start con on Wednesday, but we all know that con starts on Wednesday. <laughs> there are so many like 
unofficial things that are attributed to dragon con i mean we've mentioned heck, heck we're one of them i think <laughs> yeah. um but uh um you know whether it's the newbies group or the photo shoots uh you know there's so many things that the are, cults. are happening the cults oh, and there's, there's two yes, new the cults, cults this year yes just two uh, yes only two? Only, two? only two of that i know of. we have the cult of misconnections Oh yeah, yeah. That, oh, that uh, Dragon yes. Con himself, uh, whoever it was running their their social media that day, was full of snark, and I was here for it. It was hysterical in the Dragon Con official group, watching the conversations. It it really, when I was right, you know, dealing with being sick after Con, it really helped with all the having some giggles to go for it. And uh, there's also a cult of the cannon. The cannon that we saw on social media popping all over the place. It yes. made an appearance at the ADP party uh, and got really popular <laughs> all throughout that. So now it has its own group. And okay. speak- I have to know, did someone try to take a shot out of it? Uh, not that a cannon noticed, shot. But there were many people trying to write it. So. I, I've seen... <laughs> People reference it. I saw pictures of it, but to be honest with you, I have no, I have no information about what. It was part is. of a Napoleon cosplay, from okay. a Napoleon character from a, a video game. Gotcha. And, and it was just, just sitting out. <laughs> and it just was there. It was. It was. T- it was. Was it a, abandoned? It, no, it was taking up too much space in his hotel room, so he just left it out um, in the hallway, out of oh, out see. of the walkway. So it, you know how you'd see pictures of like a guy in a Batman costume looking out over the balconies. It's a Marriott, like he's looking over uh, Gotham. So the cannon was was pulling a Batman. Gotcha. And gotcha. then he made an appearance at the last party, and then uh, went home to somebody. Huh. So we saw him being packed up in a car the next the can- day. The, the cannon hooked up. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, that's what I took that. <laughs> like, whoa, wait a minute, the cannon hooked up? I didn't. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I know I'm married, but I'm the, still upset about that. The, the, the canon did not miss a connection. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> the canon um, did not uh, misfire. But you also, guys wanna, go ahead. I was going to say, speaking of the ADP, I was going to say, do you want to start talking? Do you want to talk about yes. the party that we don't talk about? Yeah, our uh, our good friend Dave, who for the past decade has been running the unofficial Monday night party that ends con. Uh, people have called it by many names, the ADP, the dump party, the dis- uh, the, the Monday night party. This year we called it Bruno. Uh, he, after this year, officially announced that it is n- no more. So he's put in a decade. The crowds have grown exponentially. Uh and this is, you know, this is the year that you kind of saw that just this this was much bigger than than he wanted to deal with. And to be fair, in the years that I've known Dave, he spends a large chunk of his time at con dealing with folks at the Hilton like every day. He talks to them every day all throughout con to get this approved. And that's, you know. He's spending money to go to the con just like the rest of us. So that's taking out his, his time at con. So it's a great party. It's one of my favorite nights at con because sometimes that's the only time I see certain people. Because, mm-hmm. you know, we all know we're going to be there. Mm. That's when I, you know, <laughs> that's when I can actually hang out with Crispy and uh, get to get to talk to them. You know, for more than two minutes in passing, uh, Sven made it out this year. Sven was with our group hanging out till like 3.30 in the morning afterwards. Uh, but I want to, you know, <clears throat> even though I was being snarky with him earlier, because I'd hate to him for him to think that we would not bring it up. Uh, Dave, you're you're the MVP of the con after party. I had spent years being upset that I didn't stay on Monday nights. And, you know, I finally got to and go and then I got to meet you and we became friends. And now we run the parties group together. And Mm. it's been uh, an honor to help play a little part in uh, running the Monday night thing and, you know, getting to help with crowd management and stuff. 
Uh, I got to step up and help a bit last year because you were sick. I've made some great friends who are on your crew that help mm -hmm. you put it on. And I know I'll still get to hang out with them all the time at con. And I know everybody who's gone appreciates all the work and time that yes. you put in to running it. So kudos to you and <clears throat> for making it so special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody on the crew that, that worked there, you had, you had a crack team to running it. And so that doesn't mean people aren't going to hang out on Monday night. It's just that uh, Dave's not going to be organizing it. Right. And whoever tries to, we highly suggest that nobody tries to do what he did because, you know, you need to card people and make sure minors aren't drinking and you need to have security involved and you need to have the police involved. And uh, there's, there's liability to consider. So things are going to go back to the way they used to be where people are just going to hang out in small groups and get rid of their alcohol and food that they, they can't travel with that way. And it'll, it'll go back to go back to the beginnings when, it just wasn't some big organized thing. I am. Uh, I'm it's, sorry it's, that it's I never got to experience it because I've heard good things about it, despite the fact that nobody would talk about it. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, uh, and I'm amazed that anybody, anybody could have any energy at all on Monday to do anything. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so there's, there's the some people that, that, the fact that really people hit are it. They're doing stuff. Right, just is outstanding. I, I've never seen it. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we had over 200 people this year. Wow, like it was. We were in a big ballroom, I think we we're in the, the Hilton East Grand, Grand East ballroom. Um, and there was you know, not only a lot of people in the room, but Hilton actually allowed us to hang outside of the room this year, and they've never done that before. And wow. people were allowed to go up and down to the smoking areas, and they haven't done that before either. Um, so you had, you know, games of werewolf out in the, not the lobby area, but, you know, around the, uh, out in between the two ballrooms facing each other. And, right. uh, you know, Zan was there with, with the big dragon that she won and the cannon was hanging out against the wall. And <laughs> so it was, the cannon you know, was there. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, it was now, really, now it's a party. It was really <laughs> spilling out. And then, you know, downstairs, the, the back patio had a bunch of people out there Definitely. as well. So uh, I think it was a perfect way to, to send up since to send it off to have that be the final year. It was it was a yeah good group, great group of people and a lot of fun. It sounds like it's a resilient group. So there, there will be something. And again, if it looks just, like it'll be it, unofficial. It just yeah. won't. It just won't be put together by this group. Right. I'm There'll sure be even something. less to talk about. I was going to say it'll be something that we can about. continue not to talk about. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that tradition will stay the same. <laughs> yeah. Like I already know what my plans are for next year. I'm not telling anybody <laughs> unless they're like only my circle knows. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, very cool. Um, any other last thoughts about uh, this this past Dragon Con? I know we've covered uh, just a fraction of everything that happened. Um, didn't even get to talk about uh, Jen's appearance on the Tiki Party, Tiki Pop Art Party, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, we that was our ninth annual Tiki Pop Art panel, and. Uh, it still continues to be a, a great success as far as uh, the audiences that we get and uh, the people that are on the panel. So yeah, I, I hope I can uh, be a part of it again. I, I would love that. So we haven't decided what uh, our 10 year anniversary panel will be next year, but mm. uh, certainly we will try to see if we can include as many people as possible on that. Um, yeah, just uh, I mean, and as as Jen pointed out, we will be doing more episodes to uh, to talk a little bit about the after effects oh, yeah. <laughs> of 2024. Oh, yeah. Before as, we get yeah. out of here, shout out, shout out to uh, Charles and everybody at the digital media track uh, yes. for having me be a panelist uh, twice with them this year as well. Mm, uh, yes, I, look, I, look, I look forward to uh, to working with them again next year. Yes, Absolutely. Um, and, 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 and yeah, I, 
personal shout out to Jamie and Rachel and Regina and so many of the volunteers uh, right. and staff at uh, Dragon Con this year that just made everything run really smoothly. Uh, it is always an honor for me to be there as a guest. So I, I never want to take it uh, for granted. And I appreciate all the involvement of all the track directors who, uh, you know, I was on 12 panels and, and that's because 12 people thought that I had something to add to the discussion, uh, at least 12. And, uh, I, you know, I appreciate that as well. Um, so, um, and for everybody who was there, uh, came by that I saw and there was so, so many people that I didn't get a chance to see. So, uh, so we'll have to do it again next year. Oh, of course. Of course. I mean, again, this was, this was a fun year. This was probably my busiest year. Um, thanks to everybody who helped me with the Dragon Con, Black Geese Dragon Con events. We, we had more volunteers this year than ever because I'd always been scared of getting them, but um, it worked out for the best. It's always good to get help. Um, and thanks to the listeners, I, I was not expecting to be as recognized as I was, which was kind of weird. I was in an elevator and one guy was like, your voice sounds familiar. Are you on a <laughs> podcast? I'm like, yeah. And then there was another guy after we finished our late night comics panel, which um, I'll have to tell you guys later about um, what happens when an underage person shows up in a late night panel. Um, hey, we can talk about that on the, next the, night show. Yeah, this guy came over and he's like, so... um." Did the mongoose make it to DCW? I mean, people know that I'm friends with the mongoose just from this podcast, and I think that's <laughs> great. Um, some other people, yeah, I, w- I was not ready for that. So, well, the mongoose yeah, might great. have to be on a panel next year, is what it sounds like. You know, I, I'm I'm brainstorming some ideas. I've already started talking about panel ideas with friends, and that's there's kind of something something there. But yeah, definitely um, a big help. Um, um, uh, I think it was Arbor. She took a picture and tagged me with my favorite Dragon Con report host. I was like, okay, the bar's pretty high there, but all right. Um, so, yeah, just uh, thanks to the fans. And as always, thanks to you guys for putting up with me. <laughs> the canon. Yes, special <laughs> shout out to the canon. We're going to canon and mongoose <laughs> in a tag team match next year at DCW. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if Scott has any way say about it, I think the mongoose is probably going to be banned from Dragon Con for life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if he, he knows, knows that would, good for him, yeah. He knows that would have tipped the scales. Right. Uh, right. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, and again, I think thanks to everybody for listening. Thanks for everybody for watching. Um, we are full of gratitude and, uh, we, uh, we are still recovering from the 2024 <laughs> dragon gone. So uh, as we do that, uh, we will let you know when the next uh, recording time is. Uh, so please feel free to reach out to us and watch this space for more content this year. Um, so, but for now, we're going to draw a close to this episode of the 2024 Dragon Con Report. Big shout out to our station crew, Channing. Thanks. It's been a great year so far. And, uh, yeah, so much so that we want to do more. Hey, loving it. Can't wait to come back and see all the new and wonderful things that we're going to um, have in the coming months and years. Absolutely. And thank you, Jen, for, again, working your magic on both sides of the webcam this evening and always. Always a pleasure. And, oh, our uh, listeners, viewers out there in Florida, I hope you're all safe. Yes. Uh, This upcoming couple of days with all the weather, we wish you all the best. And we can't wait to see you next month back here on the show. Absolutely. We try to cover all we can with these episodes, but to keep up with the latest news for 2025, please check out the official Dragon Con website, all their social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, uh, all the fan tracks are active on, on the social medias as well. So check them out. We are a proud member of the ESO network on the ESO network.com page. There's a direct link to our T public store filled with all kinds of cool geeky swag. Uh, the also we have a patron page where supporters can uh, can access our past readings of this month's of uh, the monthly uh, Dragon Con guest announcements. So uh, we will see if we can come up with some other content for you guys to have that we can mispronounce uh, throughout the rest of this year. A dramatic uh, reading by the mongoose. Ah, uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, <laughs> 
Thank you, patrons, for all <laughs> that your That can be scary. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you're watching or listening to us, please help support our show with a like, subscribe, and a share. That doesn't cost you anything, and it does help us out a lot. Uh, if you want to leave us direct feedback, please feel free to contact us at feedback at dragoncondreport.com. Uh, you can also reach out to us individually on the social medias, too. Thanks, for everyone, for joining us. I'm your host, Mike Gordon, and as always, it has been my pleasure. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you at the con in 2025. Yes, indeed. Take care, folks. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the DragonCon Report. Whether you're a longtime fan or joined us for the first time, we hope you've gained some valuable insights and tips to make your DragonCon experience unforgettable. Don't forget to stay connected for more updates and future episodes. Until next time, keep learning, keep planning, and keep the con spirit alive. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.